Joe, you know, and they see us, they see us race for a hundred dollars every night and we got top notch drivers. We'd show up absolutely almost 25 cars almost every night. Right. You know, we average about 20, 25 cars almost every night. Right. And how many different winners have we had this year? About 12, 13. Exactly. There is, that's year? not a class that well, has been dominated by any one no. driver. Well, this is the thing. If you if you listen to Moxie, if you listen to Northwest Dirt News, you'll know that myself and Corey, one of the two best classes that will go down in history of the of the classes and stuff that we like. I like late models. I love modifieds. I adore street stocks. My favorite class and super. My sports. favorite class as a race fan. They are my favorite class, and and, and it's getting bigger. Here's why it's getting bigger. <clears throat> it's affordable. It's affordable, yeah. and now you're starting to see purses come up. That's You're right. starting to see big shows like the, the Wall Banger at Grove and, and the Iron Giant at Willamette. What's next? What's next? Ten thousand to win for a street stock? You know what? I can see. It. I can see it happening. <laughs> no, I can. I'm telling it, you, that happens all the time. You get Texas over. It happens right. all the time. Yeah. There's no reason that that's not going to catch on out here. And you got guys with twenty five hundred dollar cars or five thousand dollar cars racing for ten thousand to win. Well, see, the thing is, too, is There's that no reason that can't. And I'll bet you. I'll bet you money right now that we see it. We see it in the next couple of years. Well, here's the thing, too, guys, is that did you – I can't confirm this yet. I haven't spoken with the driver, but there is a modified driver that posted his brand-new modified for sale. I know, he yeah. Can, he, and yeah. the flat-out reason, he can make more money and win more races in a street stock. But, you uh, know, uh, honestly, yeah. if it, for me as a racer, <laughs> for me as a racer, it wouldn't even be about making money because you're not going to make money racing here on the West Coast. You're not going to. It's just, well, you're the not. Reality I mean, it's, of it. just, it's just a glorified hobby. If you look – right. But if you look at the street stock class, top to bottom, would you rather run in that class with, you know, 40, 50 cars in, in your area against or against 25 pretty good, you know, I mean, there's some nice some nice modifieds, which are now costing. I mean, honestly, you're a crew chief on, 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 a, on an IMCA modified. The yeah. cost of a modified now, let's talk about that real quick. So you want to talk about a modified eight grand for a chassis brand new, roughly, and you're talking – if you do the motor, a crate motor right, because, I mean, crates are supposed to be the affordable option for us out here in the West Coast when it goes dry, slick, putting the weight where you want it, crate makes sense. You're talking... 6,500. 6,500 for a crate. So now you're going to 14,500. 14,500. You're not even talking to 10 yet. It takes six to eight sheets of 10 to do a car. At Transmission. A pot. Transmission. 2,300 bucks. Quick change, excuse me, quick change rear end. Another 1,600. You're going to be into the car twenty thousand at least. You sure are. At least now for the cost of a bare modified chassis, eight grand. Eight grand. You can build a top-notch winning street stock w with ease. I mean, Chris, honestly, you've got a, you've got one of the top cars in the Northwest when it comes to street stock division. I mean, it's a good quality race car. It's very fast. Eight thousand dollars, you can build your car. I bet you. Oh yeah, easily. Easily. So eight grand, you're at it. A complete turnkey, top notch, best of the best street stock, or you can spend eight grand and just have a bare chassis, lead weight sitting in your shop. See, and this is the problem with racing, weight, and this is why well, I think <laughs> we're going to see more things like the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant is it, what you did, Chris. I, 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 I'm going to say it. I don't care who you changed racing in our area. And you changed street stock racing in a big, big, big way. I sat there and I had fans that came from you know Sunset. And I, you know, even even talking about this and everything else, you know, on Northwest Dirt News, and in just in Moxie in general, you know, they're talking about, hey, yeah, we're coming down. I even sat there and tried to get a ride from a couple people because I wanted to come down and run it. You know, hundred dollars well, a start. I mean, how cool is that? But people up there were like, this is awesome. We get to go to a different track. We get to go to a track that we've always wanted to go to. That you know, realistically, we couldn't afford or, or yeah, and race and for a purse that's unheard of. Yeah, you don't even hear that in 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 a late model. You know, and then f coming away, Kaliak with 5,400 and change. It's pretty awesome. Dude. That's insane. I mean, that literally right there is another complete street stock. I yeah, mean, exactly. if you think about it. Yeah. Well, I've talked to Nikki, and she did the Bobby Morley Memorial last year. Yeah, we year. did it at the Great we, race. We, that yeah, was 1,000 to win. Yep. We did it at the beginning of the year, too. And we also did the Gems 100, mm -hmm. which I showed up for that one. Um we're going to make those part of our series next year. See, that right there is – that right there is cool. Okay. Because – But listen to what he just said. There's one word in that entire sentence. Did you hear the word series? Together. Did you hear yeah. – Chris, what are, you, what are you up to? 
we're putting a series together next year. We've got those two committed, the Iron Giant, the Wall Banger, which are So you've got three big time races gonna pay at least you've got the Wall four. Banger. Four. four. So you've got the Wall Banger that paid twenty six hundred. You've got an advertised three thousand dollar race that paid five thousand at Willamette. You have the thousand dollar to win Bobby Morley Memorial. And the fourth race The Jim's one hundred. Jim's one hundred back at sunset, which is another thousand to win, right? Correct. <coughs> That is absolutely. I just, I, I'm in awe right now because that is just those, the coolest thing. But did you remember those are all races ago? that we did this year? That's right. all. So now you're gonna you're gonna we're build gonna a series. We're and gonna you've make already it got even that commitment. better next year. We're gonna. I'm telling you right now, racing in the Northwest has changed, and um, the street stocks. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be the first to say it. I'm pumped about it. I literally have shivers going up my spine right now. I mean, right? It's, it's the coolest thing. It's Here's the coolest thing because now you've got people that can afford to race. Big money races. Here's Chris Sign in the Moxie studio saying, I'm putting together a series. After what we just saw with Iron Giant, what we saw him do with Wallbanger, this is going to be off the hook and insane. It's going to be because, it, you know, so here, here's, here's okay, so you're putting together a series. This is going to be your challenge, and I think that you already understand this. What kind of rules package are you going to are you going to uh, allow? Because, and this is why I ask, we had some cars <coughs> at Willamette, at the Iron Giant, that people were kind of going, hmm, I don't know. And you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say any names. I don't need to talk about any particular cars. I'm the talking bodies. about. You're looking at the fiberglass bodies. and. Well, we had we had some people, and I'm just going to say it. You know, you have Jeff Daniels that runs a fiberglass body, yes. an old lame auto body, five-star body. Yep. Not an advantage. Nowhere no. long. Okay, what you we're have do well. You have um, uh, Colin Weinbarger's that runs. Uh, well, that's that's Scott Gaylord's, and that Gaylord. car is now for sale. I don't know okay. what Scott's yeah. doing, but Mark well, well, Gaylord. Or, Mike Gaylord or Mark Gaylord. But yeah. you, but you talk about it. You know, people start talking about. Oh well, it's not a it's not a true uh, it's not a true chassis, or it's not a true body on the car, right? I can't say what the rules are going to be, but we are going to have a meeting in the beginning of November. Um, where I want to get everybody together. I want to meet everybody in Salem. I'm going to put a date down here real soon. And I want to get a, a set package. When we well, leave that day, it's going to be, this is what the what it's going to be, and there's no gray area. Well, Bob McCord, our, our tech down at Willamette, or at Sunset Speedway, um, also was talking about that. I was talking to him here not too long ago, and he wants to get with, you know, um, Jerry Schramm. And talk about both tracks, uh, you know, and Cottage Grove if they come in involved in it and all that about having a set role because we have people from St. Helens <coughs> that not necessarily don't want to run St. Helens no more, but they want to run Sunset, they want to run Willamette, they want to. It's a bigger they're, venue. They're talking, yeah, they're talking about running this series. Some of them aren't going to do the full series, but they do. They want to run Sunset, but with the rules and stuff that they have at St. Helens right now for a street stock car, just can't do it. They, they, it just it doesn't conform over, and that's the problem. Well, and that's and I kind of I kind of asked that because I mean we did have several different types of street stocks mm -hmm. at the Iron Giant, and you guys did a great job of making things equal. Um, I mean, all in all, I mean tires, you, whatever you want to do. I mean, I don't think they made. I don't think it made a difference. They at didn't all. make a big. Now, G, it wasn't a no, game G60 changer. G60 though, it. it the, the tire was under the right conditions. That under the change. right conditions, absolutely. Okay. And, well, now, those conditions. I mean, I think the track conditions were so fair for both tires. Absolutely, that it really wasn't a game changer, and, and you still had to be a driver to win that race. Absolutely. And the way that race finished, oh, I don't I think do. I've ever seen anything like that. I mean, <laughs> it, there is. I, I can go back to 1992, and I can remember a particular race that included Brian Drager, Russ Sell. Darren Koffel and Bob Jeffrey. It was a 100-lap show. Drager's leading. Everybody knew Drager. You know, he wasn't the, the big money guy. He's up front. There's, like, two laps to go, and he's got, like, a half a straightaway lead. When Sell, Koffel, and, and Jeffrey all break out of traffic. They break out of traffic, and they run Drager down. Now they're all trying to make moves here. They come to the white flag. As they're coming out of turn four, Russ gets spun. Russ Sell gets spun in turn four. That leaves Koffel and Jeffrey to split Drager, and they do it. And, and Koffel, out of turn two, has about seven, eight-car advantage into turn three. And out of nowhere, here comes Bob Jeffrey, barreling down the backstretch, <laughs> drives the car to the bottom, throws the car sideways into turn three, and does the, I, I will say this, Textbook. The, the best slide job I have ever seen any driver 
Corey, Corey had a cough there. Any driver <laughs> in any type of race car perform. Now you talk you talk about you know these these drivers. You talk about Russell, Bob Jeffries. These are you know in that time they were the top. They were the guys to beat every single week. These are top notch guys. Right. But now this finish. This finish we had, and and I, I'm sure there's several people out there that remember that race. I remember it like yesterday. I've watched the video probably 500 times. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a great finish. Um, but, you know, I, that was the first thing that went through my mind, other than, you know, Kyle making that pass on the high side and um, and Kronk. I, I obviously had to be shocked. Well, we, what happened is, you know, I mean, we I talked to him a little bit on Sunday, and well, I asked him if he wanted to talk about it, and he says absolutely not. And I wasn't going to bring it up in the Trophy Dash on night number yeah. two. But the controversy, and I don't know what you might have heard or what they talked to you about, was I believe it was radioed green-white checkered. It was, yeah. Up in okay. our tower, it was radioed green-white we checkered. So that's what we were expecting. Yeah. Now, when you got the green flag, everybody takes off. There was a, a wreck in turns one and two. Arnie Case and um, that's when the car Don up Jenner. The fence, yeah, Don up Jenner, the, the six. Right, the six. Yep. So we're already past time. Track owners are worried about it. I get it. You know, you're past time. You know, you're talking fines. You're talking that you have an agreement with the city. Right. Down All of a sudden, coming down the back stretch. There's a, a race for the lead with Kyle Yak on the high side and, and Kronk down low and the yellow and the checkered fly together. I think Jeremy made a judgment call. He, um, he thought that that wreck was going to take a lot longer to clean up. You know, we're, we're going to sit into it 20 minutes, clean up that wreck. I think he just made a judgment call, which I don't think was a bad call at the time. Um, yeah, we were going way over on time. Um, but I think he made the right call. Well, and I, I agree with you, Chris. I think it, the call, whether it came from Jeremy, Jerry, or Chris, to call the, to go yellow checker on that one. I mean, I was with, you know, after my, Matthew got done that night, I hopped in on a tow truck because I knew we were close on time. Help Doug out, make sure we'll get the track cleared up, you know, so you guys can fin get all your 50 laps or as much as we can. It took us 15 minutes to get Don Jenner off the wall right. safely. <clears throat> right. And then beyond that, I was up till 2 in the morning with Chris. Trying to fix the fence. And Jerry and Justin Katie. We were all fixing the fence until 2 right. in the morning to make it happen, to get, you got, to get everybody the show in on Sunday because – Without a fence, especially in that spot, uh, absolutely, we, right. we've got to have it for the safety. And it of the happened, races. and it happened right there in the middle. And, and that pole was significant. It damage. took out two poles yeah. and then a third. Yeah, there was. Oh a, there wow, was, he got up in that fence pretty good. Yeah, it that, was, there was so, a huge hole in the fence. It was I mean, massive. Yeah. And right beyond that hole in the fence is the pond. Yeah. So well, yeah, we, we've we, seen, la you know, years ago when there wasn't a wall there in sprint cars and stuff, you know, and it. cars. We've got to do it for the safety <laughs> of the racers. Absolutely. Um, and I, I, I get why that call was made, and I don't think um, – I mean, I can see I can see both sides of it. I'm on the outside. You know, as an announcer, you're, you know, we can see both sides. We can see the elation from from Kyle Yak, and we can see the uh, the disappointment, the – I mean, whatever you want to call it, on Kronk. The difference was three – I believe if I looked at it right, three one thousandths, three one thousandths of a second of a difference. As we were, I mean, okay, so <laughs> now this, this is, is where it got crazy up in the tower because the last 30 seconds. No, it wasn't even the last 30 seconds. It was about the last eight. As Kyle made his move to the high side, we, we started, we started, you know, we, we got into it, and Kyle's up top using the right rear in the cushion, and Kronk's fast on the bottom, and we knew it was going to be a race to the line. And we're calling it, and as they're coming off of turn four, Josh and I, we were actually, it had been such a long day, we were beat. We're both sitting down in our chairs. They come out of turn four. Josh and I both stand up. <laughs> and what happened <laughs> when we stood up, I feel so sorry for Debbie. Debbie, <laughs> I want to apologize to you right now if you guys are listening. Um, that got a little insane. Uh, I still I've still got a little damage here to my, my left leg. Um, <laughs> so they're coming out of turn four. Josh and I both jump up. We're screaming and yelling. You know, you know, Josh has got this look of confusion on his face like, what's going to happen? I'm talking faster than these guys are driving. My voice is shot. I don't even know what the fans can hear me. And both chairs that we're in go flying <laughs> It backwards. was awesome. They bounce <laughs> off the back wall of the announcer's booth. And both of them are laying on their sides. <laughs> Debbie's looking at us like she's just, I mean, just like <laughs> – there's something like there's a royal seriously wrong yeah. with you boys. There's a royal rumble you know, or something yeah, happening because like, we're screaming our heads off. <laughs> she, I don't know if she was scared or just thought we were completely uh Well, she thinks we're damaged. completely nuts well, anyway. She might be right. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, those cha the chairs went flying backwards. It was, I mean, we needed a caution in the announcer's booth. It, it, it started, you know, I mean, you, you started coming up because Kali.